As its name would imply, the ball bearing differential uses ball bearings to allow either output side to operate at a different rate from one another. This is one of the most simple forms of a differential, but it's not without its limitations. The biggest downside would have to be its limited power handling capability. Under high loads, it can be prone to slipping, a condition where the input and carrier rotate, but the outputs remain stationary. It also all but requires the use of a set of thrust bearings to allow for proper operation and adjustability. This design uses 608 bearings as well as a set of thrust bearings and metal fasteners in addition to the 3D printed components. The final result spins smoothly enough by hand and two extra end caps with timing marks have been added to help visualize the rotation. As we rotate the input, the entire differential rotates in alignment as indicated by these timing marks. If we lock the left side of the output and drive the input, the right output side will begin to rotate about twice as fast as it normally would. Now, if we realign the timing marks and lock the input and carrier, rotating the left output should cause the right output to rotate in an equal and opposite direction. However, the ball bearings cause a little slippage and the timing marks aren't properly aligned anymore. This slippage is the biggest downside of the ball bearing differential. Running off of drill power lets us get a better idea of an operational performance. Locking up the right side shows an increase in speed to the left side as we would expect. A rough timing test to indicate slippage can be done by stopping the right side a few times and then checking the final alignment of the timing marks. Surprisingly, the timing marks were still lined up indicating good performance. I originally wanted to see if I could get away with not having to use thrust bearings. If I had adjusted it tight enough to get good performance out of it and this first model proved that I wasn't able to do it. The two output halves would loosen the adjustment screw during operation and it would just stop working. That's when I switched over to V2 and the use of thrust bearings, which solved the problem. To make adjustments, just pop off the output half caps and use a 10 millimeter socket and screwdriver to adjust the screw. If you're disassembling the unit, start by removing the upper bearing block and screws from both sides of the frame. With those parts out of the way, the differential assembly can be lifted right out. From this point, use a 10 millimeter socket and screwdriver to completely remove the screw and right hand side of the unit. This exposes the ball bearings, which can now be cleaned or lubed depending on what you want to do with them. Reassembly is just the reverse of these procedures. The ball bearing differential seems to work great for what it is, and I look forward to testing it out in some kind of application another day.